I wanted to remind you of what we're going to build. Now this video is going to be the first of the GUI, the first the user interface that we're going to create and it's the login form. Now while it may be the simplest in terms of the number of controls that are on it, it's a really good way for us to introduce the concepts that are involved in the designing of all forms. So we have, this is what the, the form is going to look, look like to the end user. We're constraining it by width and height. But we can, of course, as you remember with WPF, we can do that if we have to, uh, if the device that we're using is not the same shape as this. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this step by step. Now this one may in fact be the slowest of all the videos that I do because I want to explain all the concepts I'm trying to use, which is related to the code that we've got here on the left hand side. Now what we've done is we've created a very simple form with the username and the password. There's an opportunity for the, the person to clear it and then log in and introduce the help file that we don't know how we're going to do yet. So that's what it is. So what we're starting to do is we've built a lot of the logic of our application in terms of the, the classes and the routines that handle the data in terms of calculators and so forth. Now we're going to build the GUI and then we join them together with the code behind the GUI. So this is my design process and this is the way I don't generally do it. I get all of my logic as far as you can, of course, done in advance. And then we start to build the GUI and then we link the two together stage by stage so that each part almost like a prototype life cycle or a, a spiral life cycle becomes increasingly complicated with more features being added. So that's what we're doing next. So we're going to design the layout of this form, which you see here on the left, but we're going to start a little bit uh, more crudely than this and then introduce some of the things that we can do to save time. So here I am with the blank form structure. And what I wanted to do is remind you where we'd done with this before. We'd identified one text block just to simply show you the very fundamental concepts of XAML. Um, and before we do that, what I want, before we go any further, I want to just lay out my workspace as I like it to be laid out. So do you see these little buttons down here? You can do all sorts of things with those to change the layout. And those you can do swappers and so forth. But I like to work side by side, okay? The most important thing to me is this. In some development processes, you will see people using the toolbox and they'll drag controls onto the form. And in many ways, that's very useful if it's, you're doing what we would call a quick, dirt, quick and dirty type uh, development. Uh, but what can often happen is that it fixes positions of things. And that's exactly what we don't want to have with our controls in XAML, in, in WPF, because we want our controls to be relative to the edges and the tops and the bottoms of the screen that we see. So I've done side by side. So this is the most important layout area for me. So down here on the bottom, I can do fit all. And that then puts it in this space. Now I'm going to delete my text block that I've got here. And so we've got a blank canvas. This is exactly how it comes out of the tin when you actually create a new page. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with this page and build it it's, you know, sort of basically um, from the ground up. We've already started with a layout thing here by putting in the header a margin. That means that here, let me just go back here and do this, do fit all. You'll see that the margin is there. That's the margin that we're talking about. It just keeps everything away from the edge of the screen in across all of the things, in all of the things in this page, at least you know that it's not going to butt up against the edge. So that's a really useful thing that we've done. And we're going to use margins a lot when we come up to uh, our coding of our application. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to start to build it from the ground up. So what are we trying to achieve with our layout? We're trying to achieve a situation where we can separate the things we want to put into our form or our page into different components of the page. And the way that XAML and WPF works is that out of the box, it comes with a grid as the default thing. So we start with a grid and we can put things inside this grid. What we can put inside those grids are called containers. So the containers are placed inside the grid and then we put controls inside those containers. There's nothing to stop me putting, as you saw with a text block, straight into the initial grid. But what we want to do is we want to split our page up into a layout that we can address by its coordinates. So we're going to create a set of rows and columns. Now our rows are one, two, three, four, five, but they are numbered zero, one, two, three, four. 
Similarly, our columns are 1 and 2, but they are numbered 0 and 1. So into row 0, and we're going to do a column span, so it spans both columns, we're going to put a text block. And in here we're putting a text block and a text box. And in here a text block and a text box. In this one, which is row 0, 1, 2, 3, and in column 0, we're going to put a clear button. And this clear button has been margined so that it butts up that way. And similarly, this one butts in that way. And then down here, we're going to put our help button in this, this row 4, centred across both rows. So that's what we're going to achieve in our layout, so that we get the structure that we want and that we can control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another container. And this other container is called a stack panel. So what we do is we do the opening chevron, start to type, and the IntelliSense is, is picking this up. Now in some versions of WPF you don't even have to do the opening chevron and it starts to be intelligent and pick up what you're trying to do. So very much like you know HTML, you end up with this set of tags. So we're going to do that. Then I'm going to apply the very um, next sort of thing that we're going to do, and we're going to put another grid. Let's do the stack panel first, though. So the stack panel, by default, will arrange things vertically. So if you put things one after the other, they'll be stacked vertically, one above the other. So that's what the structure of this is going to be in our terms of our form. You can make it horizontal stacking, but by default it's, it's vertical, and that's what we do with all of our controls, I think, in this particular application. So inside my stack panel, I'm going to put a grid. So that, and it's starting to pick it up, and you can see how IntelliSense is picking up these things, and it's going to give you options, but the grid's the most common one, so that's good. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a separator like that, and then we're going to put in this first part of the grid, we're going to put its first property. So in this grid, we want vertical alignment to be centered. Type the letter C, and IntelliSense is picking it up. So you can see that the editor is very powerful in terms of the IntelliSense that's used. So our grid is going to be made up of the tables, the, sorry, the rows and columns that we've, we need here. So we need one, two, three, four, five rows and two columns. So that's what we do here. So we put here, I keep doing that, grid dot row, and we're going to do row definitions. So we have to set up a row definitions structure to hold the rows that we're going to put into our particular application. So I'm going to put row definition and then put the forward slash and you just get the, the shortened tags. So what I can do, and we do a lot of this in, in uh, XAML and C and in WPF, control C. And remember I need control V, control V, control V, control V. And I've now got my five rows. You can't see anything yet because they don't have anything in them. But then my five rules are now available for use. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to start to say, uh, well, I'll, so I'll do my columns first, because that just makes it easier. So, open chevron, grid, dot, column definitions. And I need two. See, it's picking it up. Forward slash to make it the short version. And in this case, we'll just type it. We won't bother with the And we've now got two columns. Right, so in my diagram, you'll see that I have slightly different layouts in terms of how much height each one of those can accommodate. I particularly want this one to be a sort of fatter and bigger and separated from the rest. And a lot of these will actually manage themselves in terms of the height that they use. But let's just start to adjust our heights. Now, what the height is based on is what's called a unit system. So we have a star, an asterisk. So I can start to do height, tab, 
and put an asterisk in there. Now that's a single unit of height. So if I just copy that, you'll see that I've now got my four specified heights. Now if I was doing it like this, there'd be absolutely no point because you're all the all the same. All of these are equal, so they'll all get equal height. And WPF would manage this. So what I can do there is I can say this one is double the unit size. And this one is double the unit size. And this one is double the unit size. So these two in the middle, which are going to be the ones where we put the data, are going to be smaller, half the size of the other ones. And that's our first attempt at the layout. So the columns, obviously, we want them of equal width, so we don't do anything. We just keep them exactly as they come out as column definitions. So let's place our first element, our first pickets effect of a control, and it's a text block, and it's this one here, motoring costs login. So that's what we're going to place first. So let's do that first. So where we want that to be is within our grid. Remember, we're working with the grid so that we can separate the things that we need to put in here. So I'm going to put text block. And the words that we want to put in it are motoring Motoring costs login. Now you may be able to see them here. They're quite small in this particular part of the, the screen, but they're on the left, they're up there. They're absolutely nothing like what we want it to look like. So this is where we put properties in for our text block. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these properties in and we're going to describe what each one does. For this one, because it's in the first row, we don't actually have to say anything, but we're going to say that this is in Zero. So we're also going to say, but though we don't have to, because it's in the the default one is always accepted. Zero. So the next thing we're going to say is that this one is going to span across two columns. You can start to see our columns are starting to show. So grid dot column span is two. Okay, so that's what we've got. We've now got this spanning across both columns. It's still on the left and so forth, so let's fix that now. So we're going to say horizontal alignment is centered. And did you see it pop across there straight away? So that's the, first, the next one. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the next property. And what we're going to set next is we're going to set the font size. Do we want to be quite large? 36. So that means it's going to be big. And then we do font family. This just demonstrates that you can do stuff. So I'm going to do T-W-C-E-C-E-N-M-T. Because -E -E I think it's a nice font, actually. So that's our font family. We want our font weight. And that's going to be bold. And the next one, we're going to put the foreground, which is the color. So foreground equals blue and that's it apart from the doing of the next bits which are the margins and so forth so we've said that we've described the font so let's now describe its placement in terms of relationship with the rest of that cell so this is really important so we do margin and this is described using four parameters. The first one is the left-hand side, so 10 in from the left. Okay. The next one is the top. It's going round in a circle. And that's described the margins. You can see now how that has pushed it in from the... Um, let's fix that error. So it's pushed it in from the edges 
and put it there nice and centered with a bit of space at the top not so much space at the bottom but definitely pushing it in away from those edges so that's how I set all the properties for our text block here now it's very verbose but it's really precise we know exactly how this control is going to behave in relation to the rest of the controls on the page what we're going to do next is we're going to tidy this up so let me introduce a concept to you and they're called styles. You'll have heard of CSS, which is cascading, cascading style sheets which are used in web design. Well, in WPF, we have exactly the same facility and we have two ways in which we can do them. If for this page, we just want to do um, a style that's relative to this page, it doesn't need to be used anywhere else, we can put it directly inside this page and we'll do that a bit later on with something else. But because this is going to be the header that's used across every page in our application, we want it to be universal and available throughout. So what we do is we you go to app.xaml. See this file here? Open that up. And you'll see application resources. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So if we start with this, and we're going to do a style. Yeah. And what we have to do for all styles is give them a target type. And this is going to be for text blocks. Okay, and we're going to also say we're going to give this style a name. Now you'll know that the X workspace is the WPF workspace here that we got, yeah? So we're going to say its name is in this workspace and it's going to be small x colon name. And the name is going to be page header style. So we've now got a style that we can do here. So what we do here is we do this and each style has two values it's a key value pair and they're called setters to set the style of the thing you're trying to do setter and the first one is the property you want to set and this is going to be horizontal alignment and then you next set the value that that property wants to have. Center. So I've got the rest of the properties for this style on my clipboard because I've already done it as you saw in my, my demonstration. So I'm going to add them and just talk them through for you. So I've got font size 36, font family and so forth, font weight, foreground and margin. You wouldn't set any positional values in a style because that wouldn't be uh, appropriate perhaps in this uh, set of circumstances. There may be circumstances where you would do that and that's perhaps a thing that you might want to think about when we're looking at different things where you could apply styles where I haven't used them. So let me fix my mistake straight away. That should be key, which is appropriate for a, a style and you can see it now, it shows up. That's what made me alerted to it. So we've now got our style fully set up. So let's go back to our XAML, which is here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to save all. I'm going to build everything up here so that everything's available to everything that we need. So we've got a build succeeded. So let's go back to our XAML. And so just before here, I'm just going to put this here so that you can see a double effect. So let's use our style. Style. Open curly braces, because that means we want to use something that's inside our application and we want to use what's called a static resource tab. And there's our style shows up. That shows all the resources that it has access to. And look, it says you don't need these anymore. We've got this style which covers all of these things that you had previously set manually. So that's what we can do. We can now take those up to there and delete it. We've got exactly the same style in our control and we've used a cascading style sheet type thing. It's not, it's a, it's a style and a static resource inside WPF. And we can do a lot with this to save a lot of code. So that whenever we go to the next page, I'll just put style equals this and it'll be set up precisely correctly, exactly as when we've got it for this one. So that's enough for this video. So what we'll do is we'll move on to the next video and I know I've gone very slowly and I don't apologise because I think it's said a lot of important things that will help us go more quickly later on. And then the next video what we'll do is we'll set up the, the rest of the controls on this page.